Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to my channel learn Quranic Arabic with Shazia today I'm going to do lessons on pronouns and that is lesson number seven and eight now since seven eight and nine are all consisting of the pronouns and seven especially I have a combined a portion of lesson number eight and because the explanations are big and there are lots and lots to understand in all these three lessons so I will be dividing my videos into two or three videos to properly understand about the pronouns and before I jump into the field of pronoun the family of pronoun let's see in this video what I'm going to cover in this video I will be completing about the separate pronouns as in previous video I have completed about the meaning of the separate pronoun right how many pronouns are there how many in the first uh, person second person and the third person and all together there are 13 why do we have 13 pronouns because in the third the ghayab form we have uh, uh, the dual pronoun separately we use separately dual pronouns for the male and the female so that's why counting that one extra pronoun it makes it into 13 and I have explained all the meanings of each and every separate pronouns and the tables that is really very important you if you memorize the pronouns memorize according to the table because uh, this will carry on with the lessons till um, till the level 3 so you should memorize the same table as given and now in this uh, video I will uh, cover the separate pronoun the fixed separate pronoun means their structure uh, their fixed structure and how uh, they uh, have uh, they change their structure when I come to uh, explaining the uh, attached pronoun so first of all we will learn about the separate pronouns and the important points related to them that is they are always mabni so this is really very important they don't change and whenever they come in quran uh, they don't change their structure they are built as it is even the harakas don't change so the next point is the harakas as they are built in one structure even if they fall in the position of maful bihi even if they fall under the position of uh, ismajrur so they will not change their haraka the harakas are going to remain the same and they can come the third point they can come in the position of muqtada means as you know in jumla ismiya uh, muqtada a noun can come in the place of Muqtada. Same way, a pronoun can also take place, can take the position of Muqtada. It can come in the place of Muqtada, playing the role of Muqtada. And they are always Marifa. Know that the pronouns are always Marifa. And since they are Marifa, that's why they can take the place of Muqtada. As you remember, uh, the kind of uh, Jumla, Shib Jumla, where uh, Muqtada was Nakira, so that's why the Muqtada was pushed back and it is called the late Muqtada or the uh, Muqtada Muakhir. And the Khabar proceeds and it's called early Khabar or um, the, um, the uh, Khabar Muqaddam. And they uh, come separate from the nouns. This is like... Uh, it, they don't attach separate pronoun as the name suggests they come separately they are not attached with the nouns or the verbs or the particles they come separately isolated from the nouns and on these things all the pronouns in Arabic including the attached pronouns have only one form mabni mabni means that they are fixed and they will come in different positions but their structure their harakas will remain fixed as it is they are not going to change their harakas or their structure now before i start with the structure of the separate pronoun let me tell you that in this video i have combined uh, some portions of the attached pronoun because the explanation on the attached pronouns 
is a very lengthy topic so that's why i will be dividing my videos and i have divided a portion of the or i have combined a portion of the attached pronoun in this video so in order to understand the attached pronoun you need to understand the structure of the separate pronoun so let's uh, first understand about the structure of the separate pronoun and first we will do the first person mutakallim we have to pronouns ana and nahnu now as you can see i have given different colors here and you can see ana is mabni now why i have given this mabni with sukoon over the alif and it remains at as it is and at the era because when you come to do the era you should know that the structure or the harakas over the pronouns what are they and how you have to explain those pronouns in arab even though if you don't uh, now right now if you don't pay attention on the arab but still you should know that the alif here has a sukoon over it and this alif is the long uh, alif means with a sukoon here it is considered as the alif with sukoon here and it is mabni the structure of uh, this ana pronoun with the hamza noon and the alif long alif with a sukoon over it even though the sukoon you cannot see here but there is a sukoon over there because long vowel alif always have a sukoon over it so this that's why this is called mabni ana pronoun is mabni means fixed with sukoon over the alif not anywhere but over the alif and it will remain as it is anywhere if it comes in the position of mubtada you may think okay it is in, it is in the position of mubtada then there should be a dhamma here over the alif no that shouldn't be even though ana comes in the position of a mubtada the structure ana as you can see here the long vowel alif with a sukoon that is not visible with your eye uh, you cannot see with your own eyes here visibly that means this structure is fixed it comes as it is in the position of mubtada so in, whenever it comes in an aya how you are going to explain dameerun it is a dameer munfasilun because it's separate and mabniun mabniun means it's it cannot change its structure ala sukun mabniun means mabni fixed on sukun mabniun ala sukun so that is the arab or the explanation of the structure of an so the second pronoun is nahnu so as you can see nah and nu so why i have given you this noon because this is the most important thing you need to know about noon and dhamma this is mabni and this should be explained in the arab it is built on dhamma over the noon now this noon and dhamma is mabni it cannot be changed even though it comes in the position of mubtada or any position in the sentence the structure the last letter with the noon and dhamma will not change it's fixed it's made like that noon with dhamma so what are you going to say dhameerun munfasilun mabniyun fixed on ala dham so that is the arab and the structure of the separate pronoun and this we did in the first person ana and nahnu that is the mutakallim first person or the mutakallim in the second group or the second person or the mukhatib whatever you can say we have anta and anti now these two are for male singular feminine singular as you can see the structure i have marked in yellow the ta with fatha it is made mabni with fatha over the ta and the dami and i mean the arab will be dameer munfasil why it is the separate pronoun right dameer munfasil mabni it is made fixed al al fath that is what you have to explain in arab that it is made mabni on fatha now in the second one that is for the female uh, singular anti the ta with kasra is made mabni with kasra as you can see it is made mabni with kasra below the ta and its arab will be the mi munfasil mabni alal kasr so that's how you have to explain about the dhameers 
so now the after these two the dual pronoun that is used uh, the same pronoun is used for both male and female that is antuma now you can see the structure the un and then the ta with the ma meme and alif so there are different explanation for these three letters as un is the similar uh, letter as you can see in all these uh, three pronouns you can see hamza with fatha noon with sukun is the same it's not changed but the last letter is changing similarly here the ta meme and alif these are different from anta and anti so what are they so the ta with dhamma it is made mabni with dhamma over the ta and the alif you can see in blue is the just a letter to show you the duality whenever it comes whenever you see this alif just remember this alif is showing you that it is about two persons two things two persons so that's how you see this alif for duality and it is called aliful tasniya in arabic and what is the meme doing in between the meme is just a letter known as the letter of separation and in arabic you can say harf fasli so all these small and minute detailing helps you understand the structure of the pronouns and after understanding the small detailings after that only after that you can understand the attached pronouns it will be easier for you to understand the attached pronouns and the arab will be the mean munfasil mabni ala dam why is it dam the ta with dhamma is the main letter we should concentrate on and now you will understand why when you learn the attached pronouns you will learn why you will understand why this ta with dhamma ta with kasra ta with fatha why we have to understand this structure and then now the last two pronoun is for jama so you can see the pattern here the first two came for singular male female in between came for the duality and then last of all the two came for the jama male and jama feminine so uh, the jama male is for antum as you can see the ta with dhamma it is made mabni with dhamma over the ta and the meme with sukun is just a letter to show the plural uh, Uh, plurality of the males that is called harf jam so the mim with sukun is showing giving you the sign giving you the information that this pronoun is for male jama and the uh, arab explanation will be dhameer munfasil mabni ala dam this is the explanation for this separate pronoun then comes the antunna and sunna here the same ta is having a dhamma in yellow color so it is made mabni with the dhamma over the ta and noon shadda and fatha so basically noon is the main letter here that shows the plurality of females and it is called harf jam so the noon is actually fixed for the feminine jama and the meme is fixed for the male jama and the arab here will be the same as here in antunna or antum dhameer munfasil mabni ala dam and you can uh, see here the an the an hamza and noon sukun as in all five pronouns is the same it has not changed since the first pronoun so it is just a part of the pronoun structure that doesn't have any role to play in grammar so we don't have to look for the hamza and the noon is just the letters after that we will be concentrating on now we come to the third group that is the third person or the ghayab persons so the first pronoun as i told you the pattern look for the pattern the first two are for male singular and feminine singular hova and here then comes in between the duals and in ghayab only we have two duals one for male one for female and then we have the third a uh, group that is the hum and hunna this is for male and female so let's uh, do first for the hova in hova what do you see the structure the ha the letter ha and the waw and waw is uh, has been made fixed mabni with fatha 
and the letter ha with dhamma is just the letter to show dhamir belongs uh, it's the typing mistake dhamir belongs to the ghaib ghaib uh, group or the third person group hiya the uh, feminine singular the ha is the same it's just there is a kasra so these structures are fixed they will not change and the ya is made mabni with fatha here and the ha is showing that this uh, pronoun belongs to the ghaib group homa both the uh, dual pronouns for male and female they are both mabni with sukoon over the alif now whenever alif comes know that it is always with sukoon so that's why here the alif is mabni with sukoon over uh, the alif uh, usually you don't see with your own eyes but we consider it it is muqaddara or estimated you can say and it, there is a sukun over the alif and the letter ha shows that it belongs to the ghaib groups of dhamir and whom as you have done in the second person the mukhatib one the meem with sukun shows the plural uh, males and the ha shows the uh, that it is from the a uh, ghaib group hum and hunna uh, as the noon shadda shows the female plurality and the ha shows that it belongs to the ghaib group so easy way to remember ho wa hi ya ho ma ho munna the moment you see the ha's the ha you know that these pronouns are in the ghaib group the moment uh, you see an in the second uh, mukhatib group know that they are from the uh, mukhatib uh, pronouns so these are the small tricks that you can learn the uh, pronouns easily now let's do some examples of uh, separate pronouns coming in the place of muktada so in the first example here ana yusuf so this is a simple aya or a sentence so ana as a separate pronoun now you know ana is from the first group that is the mutakallim group ana means i so you can see the structure ana the long vowel alif is with sukun ana has come in the place of muktada apply the formula of jumla ismiya that is muktada plus khabar so the first pronoun is has come in the place of muktada so ana will be described explained in arab as dhameer mabni ala sukun as we did in the previous slides fi mahal raf mahal means position now dhameer munfasil is in the position of raf that means raf means mubtada mubtada is always in raf position marfu position raf means marfu so the uh, mir has come in the position of mubtada so it will uh, have a dhamma will it have a dhamma or not no it will not show a dhamma over the last letter but it will come with its fixed structure so we cannot say uh, that it is mabni ala sukun or ala dhamma we cannot say ala dham we have to say it's mabni ala sukun it's made into fi fixed into this structure so we will have to explain as mabni ala sukun and i have to explain that it is in the position of raf and it has come in the position of mubtada so this is how you have to do the arab of the pronoun which comes in the place of mubtada and what about yusuf yusuf is uh, coming in the place of khabar marfu'an wa alamatu rafahi adamma so this arab is simple and it is repeated again uh, again on the khabar uh, how you have to explain about the khabar now hiya baydau so hiya baydau hiya is in the place of mubtada as you can apply the formula of mubtada plus khabar so dhameer mabni al alfat so this is what i have been explaining about the structure of the pronouns and when it comes to arab you need to explain as dhameer mabni al alfat because ya is with fatha here built in the structure with the fatha but ya is in the position of raf that means in the position of mubtada fi mahal raf mubtada bayda u khabar marfu wa alamatu rafi dhamma means bayda is coming in the 
place of uh, khabar and since it has a single dhamma one may ask why is it a single dhamma it should have a double dhamma or the tanmeen dhamma here uh, why because uh, this is um, the name of uh, colors and i have also done the topic of colors in this video and when it will come i will explain about uh, the colors why they carry single dhamma at the end Hova, now the third example, Hova Rabbul Arsh al Azim, as Hova is coming in the place of Muqtada, Hova Rabbul Arsh. What is the structure here? What is the structure? Rabbul Arsh, it is the Idafa, the Lord of Arsh. Arsh means throne, the Lord of the throne. Al Azim. So, what is the Haraka here? Kasra. What is it following? It is following the Arsh, not the Rab. Because you can see the, okay, Rab is also Marifa because it is a part of Marifa Idafa. But uh, what about the Haraka? It doesn't have a Dhamma here. Okay, doesn't have a Dhamma. So it's not uh, the uh, Sifa for Rab. It is Sifa for the throne. What kind of throne it is? It is Azim, the great throne lord of the great throne he is the lord of the great throne that is the translation of the ayah so how will you explain hova damir mabniyun al fath as you can see wow with fatha fi mahal raf muqtada it has come in the place of muqtada rab is khabar marfun walamatu rafahi ad dammatu it has a damma arsh is mudaf ilayhi. As I told you, Rabbul Arsh is in Idafa. So, Arsh is mudaf ilayhi. Mudaf ilayhi falls in Majroor. And Alama will be Kasra. Jarrihi Kasra. And Azim is describing, it is a Sifa. Majroor. Why is it Majroor? Because it is following the Arsh. Since the Sheen has a Kasra, so this meme will also have a Kasra. So, it is as simple as that. Nothing much to explain here. Now coming to the Arabic colors and these are the common Arabic uh, names of colors and even in colors you will be seeing the different of gen difference of gender like these are the male colors and we have a set of female colors also and before you see the color names uh, the color names follow a simple structure that is the Af'alu. So this is the structure on which all the names of the colors falls. You can see Af'alu, the structure is similar with all the names here. So it follows the scale of Af'alu. And here are some examples as Ab, Abiyadu. Abiyad means white. So you can see the structure Hamza with Fatha, Ba with Sukoon, Ya with Fatha and Dal with Dhamma. So you can see the same Hamza with Fatha, Fa, the second letter with Sukoon, the third letter with Fatha, the fourth letter with Dhamma. So you can match the Harakas. So in Arabic this is called scale. And you, this is something, this what you will learn in morphology or surf. So for now only just know that the name of the male colors will follow the scale of Af Ali. So this why I have given you is to make easier for you to understand, memorize the, the spellings of the colors. So Abiyadu means white. Aswadu, you can see all the names of the colors is following the same scale. Aswadu, black. Ahmaru, red. Asfaru, yellow. Akhdaru is green. Azraku is blue. Bunni, now these two are different. They follow different scale. And they and I have not given the uh, particular scale because um, it's, it's not needed now. So, Bunni, Bunniyun is brown and Ramadiyun is the grey. So female color names in Arabic. So in Arabic, uh, as you know, there are different, uh, they are different in gender. Everything is divided into male and female. So colors also are divided into uh, male and female. As you did the male name colors, uh, the first one as you did was Ab Yadu, right? 
and you can see now the changes ab yadu it was a male color name but now here you can see baida so what is the change so they follow different scale the feminine color follows different scale they take fa'la there are many many scales but you need not memorize all the scales it's not necessary i have given you scale just to make easier for you to memorize the spelling of the colors easier to understand the structure of the color name so here you can see it's following fa'la uh, so baida you can see ba with fatha ya with sukoon dal with fatha and alif and hamza so the last ham alif and hamza has been added in the name abyadu and what has been deleted in the male name the hamza has been deleted and alif and hamza has been added so what is the color name now bai the o so the struct uh, the harakas have been changed and what type of harakas is following it is taking the harakas of this scale so the harakas is bai ba with fatha ya with sukoon dal with fatha as you can match the Uh, the harakas from here by the plus alif and hamza so any one of you who remembers what is alif and hamza called it is one of the signs of femininity called alif mamduda whenever you see this alif and hamza at the end of the noun know that the noun is feminine now one more thing i would like to add here why it is carrying a single dhamma some nouns uh, there are some nouns in arabic that can carry a single dhamma or you can see a single fatha over the last letter they cannot carry a tanween and they cannot uh, take a kasra in uh, any position i mean in sorry in only majroor position they cannot take a kasra for example for example if i say min uh baidau since the meaning i'm not going on the meaning i just want to give you the example baida so what will be the haraka one may ask what should be the haraka here if there is a harf jar before the feminine name will it have a kasra min baidai no it shouldn't it cannot take a kasra these nouns cannot take a kasra instead in uh, instead in this position after the harf jar since this noun is in is majroor or the majroor position it cannot take a kasra in this position it will only take a fatha it will only take a fatha even though it is in is majroor position so these type of nouns who cannot take a kasra but they will show a fatha in the majroor case these nouns are called mamnu minasarf mamnu min asarf what do you understand by sarf mamnu min asarf means mamnu means prohibited min means from they are prohibited from sarf sarf means the changing of the harakas what the last letter of the noun gets the haraka whether it gets a dhamma fatha or a kasra this is called sarf means changing the structure of the noun changing the haraka of the noun this is called sarf sarf means uh, to change so that's why it is called mamna min asarf means it is prohibited from changing its haraka it may take a dhamma it may take a fatha in mansub case but it cannot take a kasra in majroor case it cannot never 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 it can only take a dhamma or a fatha in mansub and majroor both it can take a fatha in mansub it can take a fatha in majroor 
not a kasra. So they, they are prohibited to take a kasra in Majroor. That's why they are called Mamnu Minasar. So this is the explanation of these type of nouns. Uh, why some nouns carry single the or single fatha. And they are all these nouns fall under Mamnu Minasar. So now we will see uh, Sauda. So Sauda uh, uh, has come from uh, Aswadu, right? Aswadu. So you can see the changes. Sauda. And you can see the Alif and Hamza with Tamma. Then Ahmar. Ahmar as a male name. Now you can see the change. Hamra. And the Alif and Hamza at the end. Safra. From Asfar. Right? Asfar. Asfaru. And now you can see Khadra'u Akhdaru. From male to feminine. Akhdaru. So you can see Khadra'u. At the end you can see the chain. Zarqa'u. From Azraq. So I'm writing the male name so that you can see the difference between the male and the female names. Bunniyun. So uh, Bunniyun in the male name it was Bunniyun. Bunniyun. And in feminine you can see there is a Tamarbuta. So this is separate. It has a Tamarbuta at the end to show the femininity. And Ramadiyatun. So this is with the Tamarbuta showing the femininity. So these two are different but all the other names follow the different scale. So this is all the name for the feminine colors. The writing rules of Hamza. What you should learn or what you should understand about Hamza. Before I explain those, let me tell you. Most of the students, when they come across a word in which there is a Hamza, they are not able to understand the structure why a Hamza is coming over a wow or an alif over a ya or why Hamza is having certain harakas. So these are all the detailings about writing the Hamza. Whenever you see a Hamza at the end of the noun, so what haraka it has and specially what letter it should have on which it sits. So the letter on which a Hamza sits is called its seat. It's called its seat. And this seat is decided. How do you decide the seat of Hamza? On which letter should it sit? Among the letters, as you know, I have already explained about the elif. Wow and the ya as these long vowels represents the uh, fatha alif represents the fatha wow represents the dhamma or the ya represents the kasra. So hamza usually comes sitting over these three letters alif wow and ya. So when should it sit on alif or when should it sit on the wow or the ya? How will you decide? So whenever you read a word or a noun. And if it has a Hamza at the end, you should always look at the letter before it. Now, in this example, Imra'a means a man. And here, you can see the second last letter has a Fatha. Uh, I'm not going to mark as it's written very small, so you won't be able to see the Hamza sitting on the Elif. As you can see, the Ra with a Fatha. So this second last letter will decide which seat a Hamza will take. So if there is a Fatha, as Fatha represents Elif, so Hamza will come sitting on an Elif with a Fatha. So the, uh, the Haraka of the Hamza is according to the Arab or the position of the sentence. I mean the position of the noun in a sentence. It's not because of Ra with Fatha. So that is one point. Now here you can see Bada'a. Bada'a means to start. And it's a verb. And now the Hamza is the last letter of the verb. Why is it has come 
on an alif because you check the second last letter dal with fatha so that's why hamza chose its seat as alif and the haraka of the hamza does not uh, come due uh, due to this second last letter but according to the position of the sentence and now in the third example khata um now you can see the difference hamza has chosen its seat alif why because second last letter ta has a fatha that's why it came sitting on the alif but now you can see the change of haraka it has dammate it didn't come according to the uh, second last letter it had the maten why because of uh, the um, position in a sentence so in example number 2 when hamza comes um, preceded by a dhamma that means the second last letter will have a dhamma now imru here uh, ra is having a dhamma so that's why hamza came uh, sitting on the seat wow and the dhamma came not because of the ra but because of the position in the sentence it may change its haraka as you can see lu lu e so lu lu e the second last letter is la and you can see a dhamma here so that's why hamza has taken the seat of wow but the haraka here is kasra so it may be due to the position in the sentence but the seat will be decided by the second last letter the haraka of the second last letter in the third example when it is preceded by kasra as you can see the second last letter ra imri in ra has a kasra that's why the seat of hamza is a ya now this ya has a hamza sitting over it because second last letter has a kasra and the ya is having a kasra then why because of the position in the sentence okay so the last letter haraka of the last letter shows the position in a sentence but the seat of hamza is decided by the second last letter by the haraka of the second last letter as in this example you can see the ta the second last letter shaqi means beach the second last letter is ta with kasra that's why the seat of hamza is a ya So now this ya has a hamza and it has a dam why it has a dam because according to the position in the sentence so that's why the last letter of the noun uh, the haraka of the last letter of the noun shows the position in the sentence and the second last letter the haraka of the second last letter decides the seat of the hamza so that's how you know the seat of hamza whether it should be a an alif or a waw or a ya in this case this is not alif maksura but it is a ya but it is because of the script usmani script it seems like a dotless ya but it is a ya and when it is preceded by a sukun now if you see the second last letter with a sukun then what happens what seat should it choose since the last letter has a sukun it does not have any seat so it will be written isolated on the line and the haraka of the hamza is according to the position in the sentence as you can see the fa has a sukun that's why hamza is written on the line but the haraka tanween kasratan has come due to the position in the sentence after learning the writing rules of hamza now we i will uh, explain about the different types of ma in the quran in quran when you read there are a lot of ma's and they have uh, different meanings in different situations so the four, four main types of ma there are four main types of ma so let's see what the first ma is the ma as relative pronoun meaning that which 
Now, uh, that which when it is referring to something uh, ghairaqil or non-human. And the, the one who, it uh, meanings changes to the one who when it is referring to some human. So, the first ma, as you will understand by seeing, ma as a relative pronoun means that which. For example, I have given you here from the Quran. This is Surah Quraysh. Qul ya Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul ya ayyuha al-kafirun. La a'budu ma ta'budun. So here this ma refers to ma ta'budun. What? Now this here means what you uh, or that which you worship. Ta'budun means worship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in it's a direct speech he says qul he says say and he is directly speaking to sallallahu alaihi wasallam say ya ayyuhal kafirun to say to the kafirun o kafirun la a'budu i don't worship ma ta'budun what you worship so this is ma mausula the meaning here coming as that which you worship because here idols it is talking about the ghairaqil, the idols. So that which you worship. Wala antum abidun means and you also antum. Now you can see the separate pronoun here. Antum, the meme for male jama. And wala antum and not means and you all. Abidun and you all also don't worship. Ma abudu. What? I worship means he wants to say that you all, you all kafirun, the kuffars of Makkah, you all don't worship what I worship means uh, they don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he further says, Wala ana abidu means and I don't worship ana. You can see the separate pronoun abidu and wala ana and i am not abidun means abid means the worshipper and i am also not a, i'm a, not a worshipper ma abattum worshipper of what you all worship wala antum abiduna ma abud and it's the again ayah is repeated so in quran when ayah is repeated know that it is for emphasis wala antum abiduna and you all don't worship ma abud what i worship lakum deenukum means for you all is your religion waliya deen and for me is my religion so this is what Surah Kafirun means and there are a lot of ma's used here and all these ma's are on the meaning of that which. The second type of ma here is the in a sentence it is used in a sentence to negate means not. When you want to negate in a sentence, you use this ma with the meaning not. So let's see an example how it comes. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is from the Surah um, uh, Surah uh, Tabbat Yada. Tabbat Yada Abi Lahabi wa Tab. Ma Aghna Anhu Maluhu Maluhu wa Ma Kasa. So here you can see Tabbat Yada. Tabbat is cursing. Yada is the hands of whom Abi Lahab means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directly cursing the hands of Abu Lahab. Why? Because he from his hands he used to uh, harm sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Watab means he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is cursing his hands. Ma aghna. Now here ma has come as the meaning of not. Aghna means uh, the hands of Abu Lahab uh, will not benefit. Ma aghna. Aghna means to benefit. Anhu. He, uh, his hands are not going to benefit him. Ma aluhu. Uh, anhu malu. This is actually it's a mistake. I should have colored this one, but uh, 
I colored by mistake the mall. This is the mall, mall of uh, Abi Lahab. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that his hands and his mal are not going to benefit him. Wa ma kasab and what? Now this ma is not the meaning or not. This is giving the meaning of ismausul, that which. Kasab means he has earned. So what he has earned with his hands is not going to help him or benefit him. Even the mal is not going to benefit him. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about two things. His hands and his mal are not going to benefit him at all in the hereafter. So I will read once again. Ma aghna. It will not benefit anhu. Maluhu. And wama kasab. So what he has ha earned by his hands, uh, earned by his hands or his doings, wrongdoings, and everything. So this is the example of ma on uh, the meaning of not from the Quran. The third ma is on the meaning of what, and it is a questioning tool. Now let's see the example from Surah Humaza. Wailulli kulli humazatin humaza. Alladhi jama'a ma'alaw wa addada. So speaking about the one who just, uh, you know, uh, counts and uh, counts his things, his money and everything, counts every time his money. Yahsabu anna ma'alhu akhlada means he thinks that his mal and his wealth will remain forever. Kalla la yumbadanna fil khutama. Khutama here is the name of the um, hell. Wa ma adraka. Now this ma here came is in the meaning of what? Questioning tool. Wa ma adraka mal khutama. Means what do you know what is khutama? So and here in uh, Quran, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks question, he answers himself most of the time. So, what do you know? So, this is coming as a questioning tool here. What do you know? Adraka means what do you know? Ma al khutama. What is khutama? So, this is a question. What is khutama? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the answer. Narullahi al muqada. It is the fire of Allah that is kindled. Muqada means it has been kindled. So it is the na'ullahi. Khutama is the fire of hellfire. So this is the meaning of the third ma. The fourth type of ma is on the meaning of ex, uh, exclamation. That means wonder. In Arabic you can say ta'ajub. And it works as, uh, it is known as ma lit ta'ajub. Ta'ajub means wonder in English. So it is known as ma lit ta'ajub. So whenever you are in amazement or wonder, you will say ma ajmal as sama means how beautiful the sky is. So that's how you will know that this ma is for wonder ma lit ta'ajub. And how will you recognize that it is the ma ta'ajub? In sentences, normal Arabic, you will see the sign of exclamation. But in Arabic, all these signs does not exist. From here starts the second part of the video where I have explained about the attached pronouns. But before I jump into the attached pronoun, let's understand the family, the structure of the attached pronouns. How uh, attach, the pronouns are changed into the uh, attached pronouns. So in this uh, portion or in this part of video, I will explain about the position, the arab of the attached pronouns and when they are attached with the nouns, what is their position in a sentence. So let's get started with the attached pronouns. Now let's understand about the attached pronouns. In Arabic, it is called damair al mut the same. Remember the words are different. In separated pronoun it was munfasil means separated. Here it is muttasil means it is connected, attached. 
So before you understand the attached pronoun, let's understand from where it has come. So in order to understand the attached pronoun, first of all, you should understand the separate pronoun, the meaning, the structure, the letters, everything that I have explained before you should understand that. And from the separated pronoun is derived the attached pronouns. And these attached pronouns are of two types. First, they are attached, they can be attached with nouns, particles and verbs, all three things. And the second type of attached pronoun or the mere muttasil it only gets attached with the verbs so here are the two main difference they diverge the attached pronouns diverge one attaches only with the verbs and one attaches with three things nouns particles and verbs so i have only explain nouns in this video because it will be easier to understand step by step. First, I am going to explain about the nouns in this video. Then in my second video, I will be uh, touching the particles and the verbs. So let's get started how the attached pronoun come into existence and how they are attached with the nouns. So here is a small uh, chart to understand about the attached pronouns. The f this is the uh, first type of pronoun that attaches with three things that is the noun, verb and particles. So I will be doing nouns right now and know that for the verbs when these attached pronouns gets attached with the verbs they attaches with the present tense and they attach with the past tense. So these uh, this attached pronoun can attach with both the tenses. And the third uh, is the particle. In particles, it gets attached with all the particles. What are the particles? What are the harfs here? Harfs are the uh, harf at, harfs are the harf jars, and uh, harfs are the, uh, I mean, the particles are the inna. They can attach with inna also. So these are all, you know, extended field of the attached pronoun. So slowly and steadily, we will touch each and every field, inshallah. So first of all, we will touch only the nouns. So remember, there are lots to learn in attached pronoun, attaching with the two kinds of tenses, attaching with all the types of particles. So it has lots and lots to learn. So that's why I have divided my videos. So let's get started with the nouns first. So here you can see two rows of the Damirs. The first one is for separate pronoun. As you have learned before, all the separate pronouns, it has been divided in different colors. So you can easily mark the first group, the first person, mutakallim in green. In pink, you have mukhatib and blue, in light blue, you have ghaib. And the, these separate pronouns, they change their faces, change their faces not the structure these uh, when used in ayahs they remain the same come as it is but when the moment it attaches with a noun it changes its face so you can say they are a kind of uh, morphing they can morph themselves so when they get attached with a noun or a particle or a verb, they change themselves. So, Anna changes to Ya. Nahnu changes to Noon, Fatha and Alif. You can see the structure. And Anta, now the second group or the second person, Mukhatib, Anta changes to Kaf, Fatha. Anti changes to Kaf, Kasra. Antuma changes to Kuma, Kaf, Dhamma, Mim and Elif. So you can see the change. The Ta has changed to Kaf. And the Mim and Elif remains the same because Elif shows only the duality. So it, it will not change. And Mim is the harf uh, for separation, letter for separation. And as you can see here, ta with fatha, ta with kasra has been changed to ka, kaf. 
antum has been changed to kum. Kaf, dhamma, meem with sukun is the same meme for male plural. Antunna, ta has been changed to kaf, kaf, dhamma. And that's why before when I did the structure of the separate pronoun, I stressed on the letter ta with color yellow. That's why I made it, I stressed on the letter ta because that main letter will change now when it gets attached with the noun. So remember in Mukhatibs, the ta changes to kaf. The whole of Mukhatib group will be known by the kaf. Remember, the whole Mukhatib group, the letter from ta will be changed to kaf. And the meme, the elif, the meme with sukun, the noon shadda with fatha will remain the same because they are just the letters which shows the feminine plural, the male plural and the elif of duality. So it will remain the same, only the ta will change. So slowly and steadily I will be giving details about all these letters. There are more details but right now this is enough to know that the ta, all these ta has been changed to kaf and the harakas are the same. If ta has a fatha, kaf will also have a fatha. If ta is has, having a kasra, the kaf will have a kasra. Here ta is having a dhamma, here also dhamma and here also dhamma. So kaf will have a dhamma here. So this is how it has changed, morphed itself. And, and then when you come to the ghaibs, know that this whole ghaib group or the ghaib third person will be recognized by the ha. In the ghaibs, the hoa will change or morph itself into ha. And the hia with the ha, this is the bow. Bow type ha. Why? Because it is it has been attached with elif. Here elif. Uh, ha fatha with elif. So this is the morphed uh, face of the hiya when it attaches with a noun. Homa change uh, remains the same. Homa and homa. And here you can see who and he. Homa and hima. Here you can see homa and hima. Why is it uh, Huma and Hima, I will discuss this later. And Hum remains Hum, Hunna remains Hunna. So this is the easiest in Ghaib because the uh, four of them remains the same. And the, just the two Hua and Hia changes to Hu and Ha. All the other four remains the same. And you can see Huma are twice here. Because one is for male, the other one is for female. So these are the uh, changed form of the separate pronouns into the uh, attached pronouns. When they get attached with the nouns. Now let's start with the position of the pronoun when it gets attached with a noun. And how it gets attached and what they, what's their position in Arab. So first I will do is the Ya Mutakallim. Remember Ya Mutakallim is the morphed uh, face of what, which pronoun? Ana. Right? So the Ya Mutakallim, it is known as the name of this pronoun, attached pronoun is Ya Mutakallim. Since it is from the group of Mutakallims, it is known as Ya Mutakallim. So it means my or mine. And the second one, Nahnu, the morphed face of Nahnu is Noon and Elif, Noon Fatha and Elif. It is known as, so these names what I have given here are very important. This is called Noon Elif, is called Noon al -fa'ilin. Remember and memorize the names of the Damir. And it is translated as We or Are. Now you can see in these examples, Kitabu, this is a, a simple noun. When it gets attached with the ya mutakallim, and the noun is now attached with the ya mutakallim, you can see the reds, uh, the red color holds the damir attached pronoun, and the yellow color is the last letter. Why I have marked the last letter of 
uh, this noun because it has changed its haraka. You can see the ba is here with kasra. And here you can see the ba is with dhamma. Why is the change? Why is the change? Because whenever the ya mutakallim attaches with a noun, whatever haraka it has, it forces the last letter of the noun to take a kasra. Because as you know, the ya goes along with kasra. Ya cannot have a dhamma then a ya. It cannot come with a fatha and a ya. No, it's totally wrong in Arabic. Whenever this ya mutakallim attaches with a noun, any haraka a ba has, even if it has a dhamma or a fatha, it will change to kasra. That's why I've written it is forced to take kasra. This ya mutakallim forces the last letter to take the kasra. For now, it is enough to understand this much. There are more details, but Right now, it's enough to know that, that the ya mutakallim forces ba to take a kasra. So, the dhamma is changed to kasra here. You cannot say as kita bui. You have to say as kita bi. The second example is baitu plus ya. So, I have given purposely these examples. Baitu plus ya is baiti, not baitu e. It is, it is forced to take a kasra. So the ya is the damir and the ta in yellow I have marked purposely to show you the haraka, change of haraka. And now, kitabu plus noon al faili will give you kitabu now. And uh, sorry, I have not uh, translated this. Kitabi is translated as my book. And baiti means my house. And here, kitabuna as our book. So now you can see the ba is having a dhamma here and the ba is having a dhamma. So the noon does not change the haraka. It is only with the yamutakali. Only and only with the yamutakali. As you can see, baitu, baituna, our house. Now, I have given here the formula. Kitabu plus ya is equal to kitabi. So now you should understand the structure of the noun plus the mir, what structure it holds. The kitab becomes the mudaf and the pronoun, attached pronoun falls always will be in mudaf ilahi. Why? Because this ya mutakallim is showing the possession of the book. My book. So this my is showing the possession, the possessor. So that's why it is in the position of position of mudaf ilahi. And kitabi means noun plus the attached pronoun will give you idafa. So kitabi is actually an idafa construction in itself attached with the yam takallim. The pronouns usually when they come with a noun just understand that they show the possession and uh, the mirs which attaches with the noun is always in mudaf ilahi position. So I have given you ya is, in mud is a mudaf ilahi here. Kitab is a mudaf. Noon al filing is in the position of mudaf ilahi because it is showing the possessor. We are the possessor of the books. Kitabuna are books. So noon al filing the attached pronoun is in mudaf ilahi position. All together, kitabuna, baituna, baiti, kitabi is an idafa together. So, I hope, I hope this is clear for you. Now, let's come to the second group that is the mutakallim. Where, how will you recognize the attached pronoun for the mutakallims? The kaf, right? So, now the position of the attached pronoun of the second group or the mukhatib group. So now we will do some, uh, first I will go through the names of the uh, dhamirs that is attached with the noun. So kaf with fatha is called kaf muhatiba. Kaf muhatiba is the name. Here it is for male, this is for feminine. And kuma, it has kaf muhatiba but with alif muthanna. Here also in plural, you have kaf muhatiba, kaf with tamma with meem al jamal al mudhakkar and kaf mukhatiba is there but with noon jamal al muannas 
So you should know all the structure and the names. So now we should do some examples to understand. So I have taken the same examples so that you should only understand the, uh, the structure of the verb, uh, I mean, sorry, the pronouns and the nouns. So I have taken, it will be easier for you to understand. Kitabu plus ka. Kitabu ka. Now you can see the last letter ba is still having its dhamma intact. It has not changed. So it is only with the case with the ya mutakalli. Then kitabu plus ki kitabu ki. Kitabu plus kuma kitabu kuma. And kitabu plus kum kitabu kum. And kitabu plus kunna kitabu kunna. So here you can see the damirs has been attached directly to the nouns and there is no change in the haraka on the last letter that is the ba. So all these ka, ki, kuma, kum, kunna, you can memorize like this also like a poem. Ka, ki, kuma, kum, kunna. So all these are in the position of mudaf like as the uh, formula is there. Kitabu mudaf, ka, all the attached pronoun falls under the mudafili position and you get an idafa. Kitabu ka, kitabu ki, kitabu kuma, kitabu kum, kitabu kum. Knowing the alif, you will know, okay, two persons are involved. Knowing the meme with sukun, you will know, okay, male jama and noon shadda with fatha, you will know the feminine jama. But the kaf will tell you that somebody you are talking to are in front of you. So, these are all the explanations about the second person. Now, the third uh, group or the third person or the ghaibs. So, here you should know as who or he. This is for male singular. Ha is for halil ghaib. You can say halil ghaib. It's for fe feminine singular. And know that the feminine singular ha comes with fatha and long vowel alif. It cannot come separate only as a single letter with fatha. Ha will come with a long vowel. Why? Because it has a fatha. That's why this ha uh, is having a long vowel at the end. Just because this letter is having a fatha. Then huma is uh, for duals. You two. And this is for fem feminine duals. This is for male plural. And hudna is for feminine plural so basically there is no name here just for uh, a name for ha ha lil ghaib you can say and let's do the example to understand how they attach so now uh, as i told you i will explain why they are homa and hima or who or he why they are, there is a change so i will come to this point right now kitabu plus who now since it ha ba has a dhamma so the damir will have a tamma. Kitabuhu means his book. Now the ha here is showing as his. Kitabuhu, his book. And now when there is a kasra on the ba. For example, if there is a harjar before a noun, fi kitab. So it uh, changes the haraka of the damir also. Kitabihi, just because it does not sound good when you say kitabuhi, it cannot be read as kitabuhi. It has to be changed as or it cannot be read as kitabihu. It cannot be. It's totally wrong. So that's why just because ba is having a kasra here, it has to change to kasra. But this does not mean that these pronouns are changing. They can change the structure. They can change the haraka. It does not mean that. It's totally wrong. They are fixed just because of the sounds it has taken a kasra, not because of the grammatical reasons. So now you can see kitabuhu plus ha, sorry, kitabu plus ha, it is kitabuha. And this ha of feminine will not change, even if there is a kasra under the ba, as in fi kitabi plus ha will give you ki, fi kitabi ha. This will not make a change in feminine singular pronoun. So please mark these all small detailings. 
Now we come to the duals. Kitabu Huma. Since Ba has a Dhamma, so it will remain as Kitabu Huma. And with Kitabi, when it ha Ba has a Kasra, it changes to Kitabi Hima. Fi Kitabi Hima. So except the feminine singular, every pronoun in Ghaibs will change their haraka just for the sound reason, reading purposes. Whenever the last letter has a kasra, uh, uh, whenever it has a la, uh, the kasra on the last letter, it will change its haraka. For example, kitabu plus hum, kitabu hum. And fi kitabi plus him, fi kitabi him. It will change to from hum to him. Kitabu hunna, here you can see kitabu hunna. And fi kitabi plus hinna. Fi kitabi hinna. Just because of the reading purposes, it will change its haraka from hunna to hinna. It's simple. It's not uh, according to the grammatical reasons. So the formula here is kitabu plus hu, kitabu hu. So the hu is under the position of mudaf ilahi. All these pronouns from hu, ha, huma, hum, hunna falls under mudaf ilahi. And this is the formula and you get the idafa. So basically the noun and the attached pronoun that comes together is an idafa in itself. So this is the explanation of the attached pronouns with the noun. So now let's do some example from the um, uh, lesson uh, on the errors. So first of all you should know that whenever a pronoun of this form means the attached pronoun that attaches with a noun, it has one position only that is mudaf ilahi and it is mabni. As I told you, even though it has changed from hum to him, huma to hima, hu to he, it is not because of the grammatical reason. It is just because of the reading purposes. So it is mabni. And it does not change its form. And the Arab will be, how will you explain the Arab of these attached pronouns? As the mir mabniun fi mahal jar, because it is mudaf ilahi, right? Mudaf ilahi. So this is the Arab for the attached pronouns. A pronoun built on one form in the position of mudaf ilahi. So this position of the damirs is just for those uh, pronouns, those which have attached with the nouns, remember. And similarly, we have other two positions, so we will do that later. But in this video, I have just explained about the attached pronoun that just attaches with the noun. We still have particles and we still have verbs. So, now let's see the second example. Islam sabilu. Al-Islamu sabiluhu. Now here Islam is Muqtada. Apply the formula of Jumla, Ismiya. So it is Muqtada. You will explain as it is Muqtada, Marfula, Maturafai, Dhamma. As Meme is having a Dhamma. Sabiluhu. So the last letter of la, uh, this noun Lam has a Dhamma. So it shows that it's in marfu position. Why is it in marfu position? Because it's jumla ismiya muqtada plus khabar. So khabar is always in marfu position. And there is an attached pronoun in red. And that's why the ha is having a dhamma because the lam is having a dhamma. So sabilu is khabar marfun. It is in marfu position. Alamatu rafi dhamma. What about the hu? The ha here. The ha here. Is the mir mabni fi mahal jar mudafli? You will explain the same Arab given here. It is the damir, it is mabni, it is in the position fi mahal means in the position of jar. Why jar? Because mudaf ilahi is in majroor position, right? Mudaf ilahi. You have to explain that this position is a mudaf ilahi. And in short, you can say Damir Mabniyun Madaf Ilahi. These are for the beginners. And the next example is Ala Qalbihi. This is an example, very good example, where the last letter is having a Kasra, but the Ka is not changing its Haraka. They are Mabni, right? So <clears throat> these Ka, Q, 
ki koma kum kunna the second person pronouns will not change its haraka as you uh, studied in the ghaib forms the changing of the haraka due to reading purposes is only in the ghaib forms not in the mukhatibs so you can see here ba has a kasra but the kaf is with the fatha it will not change its haraka so ala is harf jar qalbi ba is having a kasra so after harf jar you will have is majroor and what about this damir ka this damir is kaf damir mabni fi mahal jar mudafila same arab as you did here it is the damir mabni in the position of jar mudafila so you can say damir mabni un mudafila that's the easiest way you can say now this is also a very good example of uh, inna sentence so inna is, will be explained as harf tawqid wa nas and sabil so sabil the last letter you can see here has a fatha on the lam why is it a fatha because sabil is ism inna so you can explain as ism inna sabila is ism inna what about the kaf mukhatiba here attached with the kasra it is ka damir mabni fi mahal jar mudafil same era because still it is attached with the noun and the attached pronoun that is with the noun is in the same position mudaf ilahi mustaqimun inna sabil sabilaki mustaqim so you need to pronounce the harakas very clearly inna sabilaki mustaqim that's how you read and mustaqimun is khabarinna since you have isminna then look for khabarinna the next one is khabarinna hazihi sabili now this lam is forced to take a kasra why because of the yam takallim what haraka should have been here if there wasn't any yam takallim apply the jumla ismiya formula this is hazihi mubtada and sabil will be khabar with dhamma but since it has a ya mutakallim so that's why it is it has been forced to take a kasra here so hazihi is ismal ishara mabni fi mahal raf mubtada it is in the position of mubtada hazihi is also um, an ismal ishara mabni mubtada you can say that sabil it is khabar marfoon wa alamatu rafihi dhamma muqaddara why it is muqaddara estimated because the ya mutakallim has come and it has forced the lam to take a kasra so that's why the dhamma is still there but i cannot write it it is invisible it is supposed uh, as dhamma there it is estimated but we cannot write it so it will be written as dhamma muqaddara or estimated dhamma and now ya will be described as the same arab damir mabni fi mahal jar mudaf ilay so i think it's clear for you now here are some examples to just make you understand that the last letter of the noun the harakas on the last letter of the noun uh, may change according to the position in the sentence but not due to the pronouns so here you can say way sabil means way so there is a dhamma as soon as it attaches with the ya mutakallim remember the ya mutakallim forces the last letter to take a kasra so it is uh, due to the uh this uh, ya mutakallim that the lam has a kasra and here you can see sabi lana it's not due because of the pronoun but this sabil might be in a mansub position in the sentence and sabi lika so you can see the attached pronouns in red sabi lahu so here you can see the last letter harakas are changing due to the position in the sentence and not due to the pronouns now let's do some examples from the quran so it's the same surah here qul ya ayyuhal kafirun la a'budu ma ta'budu wa la antum a'buduna ma a'bud wa la ana here you can see the uh, separate pronouns antum ana antum here the moment antum see here this is for mukhatib antum and it's separate 
the moment it attaches with the harf jar lam, this I have not done, as, but it's a, an example of kum. So you can see the calf with dhamma and meem with sukoon showing the male plural. So this is the second person mukhatib attached pronoun with the harf jar lam. So it can attach with the particles also, but here it, it has been attached with the particle. But in others, uh, it's attached with the nouns. So here, lako means for you all. And in this surah, tabbat yada abhi laha batab ma ahna anhu maluhu. So mal here is the noun. And the ha dami that attaches with the noun is in the position of mudafilai maluhu means his word. And here also wamra atuhu. Imra is, means the wife of uh, Abu Lahab. Here, Imra means woman, but uh, here it is referring to the wife of Abu Lahab. Wamra tuhu and his wife or his woman, his wife. So this ha is in the position of mudaf ilahi. And hammalat al hatta fi jidiha. Now see, you can see the ha pronoun for feminine singular, ghayab. Jid means the neck. Whose neck is being referred to here? Her neck. Who is she? She is the wife of Abi Lahab. Why is Allah subhanahu wa telling that uh, in her neck, Hablum min masad. Habl means rope. Min from. Masad means the fiber of the palm leaves. Why is Allah subhanahu wa saying that uh, she will have a, a, a necklace made of palm fiber around her neck. Palm fiber is something very, um, uh, it is hard and it uh, scratches on the skin when it is rubbed around and it is really very painful and she will wear a necklace made of palm fiber around her neck. Why? Because in the dunya, uh, she used to wear a very expensive necklace and she used to uh, feel very proud of it and she used to say that she will spend her necklace to harm Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's why she will also be in hell with the Abi Lahab in the uh, hellfire. And the next example is Ila Rabbi Ki. So now here you can say Rab. Rab is the noun and Ki is attached with the noun. And here the position of this Kaf Mukhatiba is uh, Mudafilahi. So the whole Idafa is Rabbi Ki. Your Rab. Your Lord. Ila Rabbi Ki Radiyatam Mardiya. Fadkhuli fi ibadi, my slave. Fadkhuli means enter. Fi ibadi means my slave. Where should you enter? In Jannati. Ibadi, my slave. Ya, yeah, actually this is the Uthmani script. This is not Ya yeah, Alif Maqsura, but it is the normal Ya. Yeah. And here it is the Ya yeah, Mutakallim, the attached pronoun. And it is, uh, in this script, it comes as uh, without dots. It's just a, a difference of script. So it is Ibadi, my slave. Fadkhuli, Jannati. Jannati, my garden. So these are all attached pronouns. And this whole Jannati and Ibadi, Rabbik, is all Idafa. And Jidiha is also Idafa. Maluhu is also Idafa. Imratuhu is also Idafa. Except attached with the harf jar lam here also. Attached with an harf jar an. It is different. This is not idafa. And I have not um, done the, uh, at, uh, the attached verbs with the particles now. Inshallah when it comes I will explain. There are more examples of, from the Quran. So let's see. Wali an amikum. An am means the cattle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you for uh, the um, food and trade. Wali an amikum. An am is the noun. And kum is the damir attached with the noun. It is in idafa. So uh, an amikum means your cattle. Fa'idha uh, ja'at. Yawma that day, 
فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ السَّاخَ means that day when the loud sound uh, or the shrieking, screaming sound will come. That day يَفِرُّ الْمَرُوا يَفِرُّ means he will run away. مَرُوا means the man will run away from أَخِي his أَخِي brother his brother. So you can see here there is a ya. That's why the Damir who has changed its katra to uh, I, from Dhamma to Kasra. Min akhihi. From his brother. And from whom he will run away? From his mother. Ummihi. Since there is a Kasra on the meme. So the Damir who has changed to he. From his mother. From Abihi. Wa Abihi. And from his father. Wa Sahibatihi. Means from his companions or the wife you can say. Sahibatihi. And wa bani from banihi from his son's children. And the next example is is nadahu rabbuhu. Here who is a tie with rabb, and it has a dhamma. Why? Because the ba has a dhamma here. Here in this line you can say wa ahdiyaka ila means ahdiyaka means uh, ahdiyaka. He has guided you ahdiyaka. Here I have not marked here. But this is another attached pronoun. Uh, with this is actually with the verb. That's why I did mark it. Wa ahdiyaka ila rabbika. Here you can see ba is with kasra, but the kaf mukhatiba has not changed its haraka. Rabbika fatakhsha means uh, he has guided you to your rab. Fatakhsha and fear. And the last of all. فَقَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى رَبُّكُمْ Your Lord. Actually, this whole um, ayahs, these ayahs are on the Fir'aun. It is the, what Fir'aun did when he was given the invitation to accept Islam. So, it is actually describing the whole story. When uh, Musa al-Islam uh, went to Fir'aun and told him about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Iman, so he just rejected, refuted, and he did not accept Islam. So, this is the whole story on Fir'aun. So, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, this is the end of the lesson, and uh, I will be back with another video, especially on the attached pronouns and with one topic only the uh, pronouns attached with verbs. And it is a very big topic, inshallah. I will try to explain it as easy as possible. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.